the golden rule. Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. What do Muslims say to this, Thaddeus? They say, oh, we have exactly like what Swati Dawa said. We have Sharia, a complete lifestyle guide that tells us what foot to walk into the bathroom with and how many stones to wipe with when we're done, right? They've got this whole thing. They don't understand why there's just one rule, right? Well, how many, what's the laws of Christianity, they ask? How, wh what are you supposed to do in this situation, that situation, the other situation, right? Our Sharia manuals tell us exactly what to do if someone's going four miles over the speed limit or seven <laughs> miles over the speed limit, right? The lashings are different. The punishment is different. We have a complete guide to living life, which is not actually living, by the way. It's called being programmed like a robot, but that's a completely, completely different topic. Um, so... So they, they have a difficult time with this, right? And uh, again, I already kind of talked about how it's a cult-like mentality. This is built into their cult-like mentality of them not thinking for themselves. But Jesus, he covered the entirety of the law in one simple statement, right? Uh, treat others how you want to be treated that is did, did your mother tell you that over and over and over again or is that just my mom uh quite possibly quite possibly you forgot you did not you? um but yeah so um and, and the, it, when you really break this down honestly and th there's a complete difference between a sharia law manual and treat others how you want to be treated right uh it's 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 almost night and day right one of them is a strict ritualistic system right do this not that do this not that do this not that the other one is you actually have to think mm -hmm. right you mm -hmm. actually have to take into consideration how you should treat others you actually have to put yourself into their shoes into their situation and you actually have to ask yourself what is the best thing that I could do for them, right? It doesn't mean that you just give them everything that they ask for, right? Sometimes when your child asks you for a, a stone, you instead give them bread, right? So we we have to, it's, it's, it's not a law. It's a virtue ethics system. It's virtue ethics. This requires thought. This requires reflection. This requires some philosophy that goes into this right and i've already wasted enough of our time hopefully not wasted um but inspiring philosophy if you guys haven't been to his channel um he has a very 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 good video about christian ethics right and and how christ teaches uh, an ethics system how the rest of the new testament like paul's writings teach a virtue ethics system it's not black and white black and white it's it's focused more on the heart of the matter right so if i'm only following step by step like i said earlier uh rituals i'm a robot right god doesn't want robots god doesn't want slaves god actually it's it's a weird concept muslims don't quite understand this god loves us first and, and when, when, if you ever have a child, you're blessed with a child, you love your child before they're even born. And you want, you, you, you want more than anything else, right? You want to have a relationship with them and you want them to choose freely to have and desire a relationship with you. And you can't have that without a virtue ethics system in place. Um, you, you, you can't have a relationship when there is Sharia, ritualistic, robotic, slave to master relationships. It's not a real relationship. God wants a real relationship. Absolutely. Before you go on, we have uh, 
couple comments from the audience, uh, including some Muslims. But first from Andrew Martin, uh, where Sharia comes from Muslims who try to make sense of the Quran, Sunnah, and Hadith, it's not from Allah. Of course, Muslims will disagree. They'll say that the the Sharia is, I mean, a, a informed Muslim, at least, will say mm -hmm. the Sharia is Islam. This is God's divine law. Uh, and Allah protects the, the consensus of scholars to make sure that they teach the law properly and mm -hmm. whatnot. But uh, to us normal people, uh, as normal thinking people, yes, absolutely. It's uh, man-made decisions about uh, God's supposed law. Right. right. So we have two comments from Muslims here. First, the, the a, a bad one and then a better one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so first from Swati. Um, but you Christians are without law. Actually, law is a curse for you. But Jesus will judge everyone by his deed. Can I ask by which deeds? Uh, so bef before answering that, and I'll let, I'll let Astrid answer that, I want to point out that the, this desire to have explicit laws is a very human thing. And this is a, a, a thing that even Christians will do. They'll be like, I, I would like some very explicit laws. I, I would like some explicit commands about uh, what I can do and what I can't do. And God knows that about us. And that's what he did in the Old Testament. He gave mm -hmm. us a system of laws. Mm -hmm. And he did that to demonstrate that laws cannot change someone's we heart. We can't follow them. Laws cannot uh, make us better people. Mm -hmm. They might inhibit some outward actions, but they do not change anything internally, and they do not ultimately even achieve uh, outward aims. The only way to actually have a, a change, actually be good, is to be changed internally. And biblically, that's called two things, the circumcision of the heart, right? It's not just an outward expression of actual circumcision, it's being circumcised of the heart. It's having your heart of stone removed and replaced with the heart of flesh. Uh, Christ also says it's it's being reborn, right? Born again. Um, these these are throwing away your old selfish, hedonistic, animalistic natures and taking on a virtue ethics, uh, thoughtful, caring, relational. Um, uh, uh, what, what's the word I'm trying to use here? Um, nature. You're you're mm -hmm. trying to put on that that new new type of nature. Um, you may have to reread this because the only thing I see is is my full screen. Um, but let's let's play a game, Thaddeus, with what uh, Swati said here. Let's play a game of did he use a straw man fallacy? <laughs> did he use a red herring? And did he use a two quote fallacy? Um, I'm not sure he used all three. So Swati, congratulations on that. I'm I'm not sure you did. I can tell you that you used the straw man one. Um, Thaddeus, I don't have it in front of me. Can you point out? Yeah, where let me, let me re re repeat it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but you Christians are without law. Actually, mm -hmm. the law is a curse for you. Mm -hmm. But Jesus will judge everyone by his deed. Can I ask by which deeds? Right. So it, that's a that is a straw man fallacy. Um, more so predicated on a complete misunderstanding and a cherry picking um, and a non contextualization of what the passage or passages that you've cherry picked and mish mishmashed together are coming from Swati. Um, so the, the law, uh, the rules and, uh, uh, are all things that we ought to do, right? They're all oughts. They're part of that virtue ethics system. That's why Jesus says, treat other people how you want to be treated. He also says there are two main laws. He says, love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul and all your strength. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself, right? These are basically virtue ethic types of system. And then Jesus goes on to say all of the law and the prophets uh, hinge on that, on those two rules. It's pretty simple, right? If I am actually loving and doing all these things um, in a relational matter, then as a result of that, I do right by the law. Now, at the same time, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of an example, Swati, uh, and Thaddeus, jump in if, if you would like to. Um, I'm going to give you an example. If I'm driving down the street at 100 miles an hour and the speed limit sign says 30, 
uh, and I get caught, do I get in trouble? Or should I, ought I get in trouble? Yes. Right. Because there is a law, there's a speed limit law, something that I cannot transgress. Is that a curse for me? Uh, in a sense, yes. In a way, right? It is, it, in a sense, it, it is a way. Now we're taking out the whole, I could hurt myself, hurt others thing, right? We're gonna, I understand no analogy is perfect. Um, but because that law is in place and I transgress against that law, I am in trouble. If there's no speed limit sign, I'm out in the middle of nowhere in the desert going 100 miles an hour. Can I get in trouble for going 100 miles an hour? Uh, you cannot. I cannot, right? Because that's that, that there's not that law for that particular thing. Now, am I saying that, uh, oh, uh, uh, you the the law that commands you to not murder it doesn't matter i can just go murder i can commit adultery i can i can lie i can steal i can do all these types of things and uh and christ died for me and it doesn't matter that would definitely not be the christian position right because that's not me loving god i'm not loving god that's my commandment that's not me um loving my neighbor as i love myself right that's not that's not it either. Um, so anytime I break that particular commandment, right, I'm transgressing God's law. Now I'm going to do that. I need forgiveness. I need repentance, right? I need to do all those things. And that's why Christ came to, to live and to die for us and to resurrect on the third day so that we could be raised alongside with him. But that's, that's why uh, what you're saying is a straw man fallacy. It's, it's not actually the position that um, any coherent Christian would hold. Absolutely. And I'm going to go ahead and put in a bonus fallacy here because oh, he's sweet. actually a co co committed an equivalency fallacy on mm, stated. Yeah. He has equivocated law with morality. So what, he, what he's saying, because in his mind the two are one and the same, is that Christians have no morality. Uh, but that is incorrect. Mm. So we, ha we have what you could call moral laws, but that's not what the text means when it says the law has mm -hmm. become a curse. Mm -hmm. it, it, it means that we are incapable of following the law. And when uh, someone, I think I saved the comment here. Yeah. Uh, so Carol put it well, the more explicit the laws, the more lawless the people. There's no desire to be good, but a reliance on a law to be right. good. And right. that's how the law becomes a curse for us. If all we're trying to do is follow a set of rules, make sure that we're within the letter of the law, then we're not actually becoming more moral people. Mm -hmm. And we often are becoming less moral people because we're thinking of ways to get around the letter of the law while violating the spirit mm -hmm. of it. You know, yep. the law The law says, uh, to use your analogy, do not go over 35 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, maybe I can get around that law if I drive on a street without a marked speed limit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can. But right. the purpose of the law is to go at a safe speed so that, you know, you're, you're not risking your own life. You're not risking hitting a, 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 a person walking down the street or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's why you have lower speed limits where there's more pedestrian traffic and higher speed limits where uh, the road's intended for cars only. Right. So I, maybe I can find, a, you know, a country road that doesn't have a posted speed limit and I can drive 100 miles an hour and maybe it's a non-incorporated area and, right. and there will be no one to arrest me for going that speed. But that doesn't mean that I've done good, uh, which is the, what our friend here seems to think. Mm -hmm. He thinks that if it's not in violation of the law, it's good. And if it is in violation of the law, it's bad. And to continue the same analogy, sometimes breaking the law is could be a good thing. Mm, yep. uh, let's say that you, there's a legitimate medical emergency and, go. And, and you go at a speed faster than the speed limit and that's the only way you can save someone's life by getting mm -hmm. them to a hospital faster. Mm -hmm. That's a legitimate breaking of a law. But according to the equivalency fallacy that he's committed, that would be morally wrong. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, Jesus gives us over and over, his life story teaches us over and over and over again that um, people misunderstood him, right? How many, how many times was he chastised for eating on the Sabbath, right? Feeding his disciples on the Sabbath, healing people on the Sabbath, right? He was chastised over and over and over again 
for for doing those types of things. And in fact, he ends up rebuking the the scribes and the Pharisees because they don't actually understand the law. It's it's exactly what you just illustrated just 2000 years ago um, uh, using 2000 years ago I- examples. Right. Um, you're you're not going to like leave your donkey in a in a, like quicksand or in a ditch just because it's the sabbath day you're going to pull them out you're not going to starve to death just because it's the sabbath day you're not going to um you know let someone be injured or you know you're not going to miss an opportunity to heal someone just because it's it's a it's a sabbath day or something like that right um there are in a, in a virtue ethics system there are certain certain things that uh are 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 i don't know like required but it's jesus gave us perfect examples of um how the law ought to be um understood the 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 pharisees of of that day were misunderstanding the purpose of the law and jesus came to correct and help us understand the the virtuous side of of what the law actually actually is super simple i've said it twice love god love people that includes your enemies it's really simple Yep, absolutely. Uh, at the core, the law is simple. And uh, we have a question from De Niro along these lines. But first, I wanted to read this from John. Uh, he says, we are not without any law, we as Christians. Mm-hmm. We live under a far stricter law, the law of Christ, the law right. of love. One mm-hmm. can be a perfect Muslim, but a completely hateful person. See, for example, Muhammad. Right. And this gets to what I was saying that, you know, we, as human beings, we want a set of rules to follow. We want to, we want you know, it to be black and white so that we know what we can get away with. Mm-hmm. And Christ doesn't allow that. He says that you have to be loving in every situation. You have to be good in every situation. I'm not giving you a massive list of commands so that you know what to do on a Tuesday at 3 p.m., (laughs) (laughs) which might be different than what you do at Sunday at 3 p.m. when when you uh, are driving down the street. Because, one, God trusts us enough to treat us as if we are not children, that we don't need constant instructions on everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And two, as we've alluded to a couple times, an s- explicit set of instructions doesn't make you moral and right. can have the opposite effect. So, yes, absolutely, Christians have moral laws. We have moral commandments to follow. Yes, absolutely. But and they're not the same thing that. as... as what Swati and, and uh, a lot of Christians as well mm-hmm. tend to think of as laws, yeah. you know, yeah, secular exactly. laws that you follow the law and you're good. Exactly. No, 100%. And, and that was really good. And just one other thing I'll point out is it is more difficult, right? And, and from the aspect of truly wanting to do the right thing, truly wanting to do good. Um, but Jesus starts out, right, since we're going through the Sermon on the Mount, we'll go back to chapter 5. He starts out and he goes through several of the Ten Commandments and and he says, you heard, right, that, uh, you know, thou shalt not murder. But I tell you, if you hate your neighbor, you're already guilty of murder, right? If you lust after another woman, you've already committed adultery, right? He, he goes on to say that, and he's pointing inwardly, he's pointing to the heart. He's saying it is actually your desire that is, is the cause of sin. And when you even have that desire, at least contemplate acting upon that desire, that's when you have actually committed that sin. That sin has already, that sin has already happened, right? So that's why, it, it, to me, the Sermon on the Mount works like this. You're completely hopeless is basically what he's saying, right? At the end of chapter five, he says, you must be better than the scribes and the Pharisees. And then he goes on further and he says, you must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect, right? If I'm hearing that at the end of chapter five, I'm just going to throw up my hands, right? I'm going to throw up my hands unless I'm completely delusional. I'm going to go, I can't. I can't be perfect and holy like God. It's impossible for me to do it. And especially after you're telling me that my thoughts and my desires are actually counted against me as well. Um, I'm going to be like, holy cow, we transitioned from chapter six. And as we're getting here to chapter seven, we're starting to get answers from Christ. We're starting to see uh, that there is hope, right? He's pointing out the human, the, the human problems, the, the, the human predicament that we're in. And then he's going to say at the end here, you know what what you need to do um and his life is is his entire mission on earth was to point that out to us to make us realize that we're desperate and we need a savior and then to point 
point that desperation and need of a savior towards him and to know that he is God and that he loves us and he died for us and he resurrected so that we can have eternal life with him. There's really, there's really no better story. Star Wars Absolutely. is cool. Lord of the Rings is cool. Some of the Marvel movies are not great, but some are cool. There's not a better story. And pretty much every story that's good is based on that sort of journey. All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a lot of great comments in the chat. So I'll just read this one. And then I do want to take this question um, from mm -hmm. a Muslim. Uh, the law says perform these outward actions. Christ says if we even have hate in our hearts, mm -hmm. we have sinned. And not just sinned, by the way. We have murdered. Guilty of murder. Uh, but here's the question from... Uh, De Niro. Well, first, uh, this was secondary, so I just want to point out him being making a ridiculous straw man fallacy. Mm. Uh, so God created the laws for them to be impossible to follow? Nice! Uh, yeah, that's not what we said. Go back and watch it if you honestly don't understand. Mm -hmm. But here's his real question. Uh, so he said, I just got here, but are you basically saying treat others as you want to be treated is enough to build and maintain a society? <laughs> well, first of all, we didn't say that. Uh, I, I want to point out very clearly that we never said anything about building or maintaining a society. Mm -hmm. Since when is religion about building and maintaining a society? I thought that heaven was in in the afterlife, in the spiritual world. I didn't think that we were supposed to build, try to build heaven here and now with a set of rules. Uh, what would you like to add to this? I, I could go on, but I would like to hear your thoughts. Uh, I'll, I'll let you go on. I'll just, I'm just going to say one verse. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's all I'm going to say. Absolutely. So I, I will say that, yes, in principle, you could actually build and maintain a society on this rule if everyone's following it. But, of course, not everyone will be. And there is a place for secular laws. There is a place for law and order. But it's not the same thing as morality. Christianity is about morality. It is not about laws. It is not about building a society. It is not about telling us how to punish people for their guilt. Uh, it is about the opportunity to have moral forgiveness, to be in morally right standing with God. That doesn't mean that we don't have secular laws that help society function better. The two are different questions. So you as well, although uh, not as blatantly as Swati, have committed an equivalency fallacy. Mm -hmm. When you're saying or you're implying that when we say that, that the all the laws boil down to treat others as you want to be treated and love God with your whole heart and whole mind and your whole soul, that uh, we're saying that's how you should organize your society. It should be a guiding principle, absolutely. Well, but that doesn't mean we don't also have explicit laws. Well, okay. So, uh, if it, I don't remember his name, Guy, um, De Niro. how uh, how could how could everybody loving each other as they love themselves, loving their enemies, loving God, um, treating others how they want to be treated? How could that not create a great society? I, I'm very confused. I would I would love for you in the chat to explain to me the flaws in that it, logic. Actually, uh, this is perfect. Goes back to what we were saying at the beginning uh, about psychological projection. He's he's implying that it, this couldn't work, right? He's he's implying that this law would not be sufficient. And why is he implying that? Because he knows his own heart. He knows that he would not follow this law if it was the only law available. Yeah. Do you want to be lied to? Do you want to be scammed? Do you want to be cheated on? Do you want to be murdered? Do you want, like, come on, dude. If you don't want those things, do you want your six-year-old daughter to be married to a 50-year-old? Do you want her to be consummated by a 53-year-old when she's nine? Do you want any of those things? Do you want to abolish adoption? Do you want to marry your uh, ex, uh, your ex son's ex wife. After you cause the divorce, do you want that done to you? Then don't do it to others. That's a pretty simple fact. And un unfortunately, and the, these types of distractive tactics that they use get me a little bit frustrated. Like, yes, that's a projection. If you want to do all of those things, it doesn't mean you ought to do it, right? It means that you shouldn't do it. And if you actually treated other people how you want to be treated, if you love God, you love people, love your enemies. What problems? would arise from those types of things 
interpersonally, right? Of course, there could be natural disasters and all that kind of fun stuff. But yeah, it's it's a it's a preposterous thing, and I would love to hear his response because the creativity of these people sometimes is very astonishing. I, I want to yep. genuinely want to hear it. 